Hi, and welcome back. Uh, in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use basic uh, selections. Uh, we'll be using the Quick Select tool, and we'll be combining uh, two photographs to make um, an interesting composition. So I'm going to go ahead and just do File Open and go find my uh, images that I want to work with. So here we go. So I'm going to take this uh, photo of Stephen King, the famous horror writer. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in, I'm going to try to take this creepy house and put it, uh, put it in there with, uh, with Stephen King. Um, okay, so uh, what I want to do is um, I'm going to bring in the house. So I'm going to start off with the house and I'm going to take the quick select tool and I'm going to go ahead and just start going over the house. It should be pretty easy to select. So with the quick select tool, the way that it works um, is you basically draw over what you want to select and uh, the selection will constantly be refining itself. If you accidentally select more than you need, for instance, if I go in here and I select the sky, you can hold down the option key on a Mac and then you can just brush over the parts that you don't want and it should, uh, it should refine. And sometimes you have to zoom in um, and change your brush size so that you can get those really detailed little areas there. Uh, my advice is always, um, if, if you have to decide between getting more or less, uh, always get more because then you can always trim your selection. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this bottom left-hand corner here. Let's try to get a little bit more of a precise selection here. There you go. And I don't care too much about the um, base of the house too much because I'm, I'm thinking that that's going to be um, hiding behind Stephen King. All right, so something like that. Let's see. So I just held down the option key and I carved out this little area right here. Now I'm going to add this little bit of this roof that I didn't get. Okay, so it's having a little bit of trouble on the edge here. Um, I could use the refine edges, but um, I kind of don't want to introduce that yet until another tutorial. Okay, so just finishing up here. Okay, so once you're happy with your selection, you can then press Command J and that will lift your selection up to another layer. I'm going to hide the original background so you can see my selection here and it's pretty good. Um, now I want to get it into the Stephen King photo. Um, so uh, the way that you can do it is just grab the move tool, left click and hold down that left mouse button, bring it up here so that it touches the tab of the image that you want to bring it into and then bring it back down and then let go of your mouse and then you'll see that the two will come in here. Um, so what I can do now is I can do a bunch of things. I can go ahead and I can resize it. Um, I, could, um, I could change the opacity of the layer so we see like a creepy house and we see Stephen King. You could do a composition like that. Um, I'm going to hide the house for a moment and rename my layer. Um, I'm going to make a copy of the original Stephen King um, image here. So I'll select the background. I'll press Command J. That makes a copy. I'll call that copy, I'll call it edit. Okay, so what I want, what I was originally imagining was I was going to take Stephen King and I was going to move him further down here like this. And then I would have the house actually, let's make it a bit smaller. I was going to have the house actually coming out of his head, uh, kind of like his imagination of his sort of his creepy writing, uh, which I think is fantastic. There we go, something like that. Okay, so something like that. I'm going to go ahead and move him down a little bit more because I care more about his top of his head than I do his sweatshirt. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so now that I've got that there, uh, and I apologize if you can hear the construction going on behind me. It's quite loud. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the house layer. 
I'm going to go, um, I'm going to make this um, grayscale so that it matches the, uh, uh, the photograph of Stephen King. Um, and I could do it like how we did in class, which is uh, image adjustments, and I could choose desaturate. Uh, I want to do it in a non-destructive way. So I'm going to take this house layer here. I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layer uh, window, and I'm going to click, I'm going to create um, an adjustment layer. And I'm going to click on the little, it's the little white or gray and black circle. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go ahead and choose, um, let's see. So I'm going to choose um, a adjustment layer. So I select the house here, come down here, and I choose the fourth icon. There's a couple of these here that will get me um, a grayscale look. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose, I could choose hue, saturation, I could choose black and white. I'm going to choose um, hue saturation and you'll see that you get your um, panels up here and you'll also see again if this is your first time using adjustment layers you'll see that we have the adjustment layer here on the left the symbol there and on the right we have a mask so we can actually control this which is really powerful um, I've got my three sliders here hue saturation and lightness I'm going to drag the saturation all the way to the left and you can see that it sucks out all the color so there it is there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I want to I want to get rid of this crisp edge uh, along the base of the house and that's where um, this mask comes in. So I've got the mask selected. I'm going to go ahead and choose the color black and I'm going to choose a brush tool and I want a nice soft edge so I'm going to choose uh, this brush right here so it has a nice soft edge. And I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to draw actually whoops sorry wrong layer um, I don't want to draw on this mask here. That is the mask uh, for the uh, for the effect for the hue, saturation, and lightness. So as you saw, if you were watching closely, if I do do this, it's going to make some of it come back in color, um, which is a really cool effect, but not what I wanted. Um, what I want to do is I want to come down to the house layer, add on a layer mask, and now I can go ahead and brush. So I want the layer mask to let me feather in his hair and get rid of that crisp edge there so we can see that his hair is going up into the house and it really looks like um, you know the two are together so it just has the kind of that surreal look okay, let me get rid of this it's a little easier for you to see so I'm just applying really light physical pressure and I'm just bringing in just doing tight little circles here and there uh, and it is pitch black as the color Okay, so there we go. So Stephen King's got that going on there. Okay, so that's that's not bad for this uh, tutorial. What I'll do is I'll pause the video and maybe I'll finish the background there since obviously that stands out. Um, and then I'll unpause it and let you see the, uh, the finished result. Okay, so as a bonus, um, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how I'm doing the top part here. I just realized I, I probably should do that. Um, this is going to introduce a new tool that we haven't gotten into yet in class, but is next on our list. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to clone, I want to copy this area up here on the left and the right hand side. And I basically want to extend it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. And this new layer here um, is on top of the edit layer. And the tool that I'm going to grab is going to be the clone stamp tool. Uh, you can see it right over here. It looks like one of those old-timey stamps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my brush size is a pretty good size. And I can choose, again, I can choose any one of these brush presets. Um, I'm going to start off with a soft edge brush. And the way this works is you hold down the Option key, and that gives you like a little target. Maybe you can see it better here. And what you do is you basically tap once where you want to sample from. Then you bring your brush up to where you want to sample from um, and then you can go ahead and you can paint. Um, let's see, what am I... I need to be able to sample all of the layers. Why am I not... Ah, okay. So um, here's my pop-up menu right here. Um, it says current layer. I need to choose all layers. Um, so again, option, tap where you want to sample from. Make sure this little pop-up menu says all layers. So that way, what's happening is, is that 
the benefit is, is that I'm getting information from the layer below it. Um, and it's copying it up here. But it's putting those pixels um, on a new layer. And the benefit of that, as you can see over here, is that I can turn that on and off and I'm not actually damaging the original Stephen King photo. So the secret here is just holding down the option key, tap to sample, and then come on in here and kind of bridge the gap. And again, I like to typically do it with kind of a soft edge brush so I get a nice blend effect. And then I just tap option, click, and I try to get as close as I can. And I find that you have to sample often, otherwise you're going to get a very unnatural result. So I just get in the habit of, after a couple seconds of brushing, um, I just tap option and get in there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm sampling an area, um, kind of like a musician might sample um, a piece of music. And it's pretty much just rinse and repeat. Um, you just have to really get in the habit of kind of being on the lookout and constantly evaluating and seeing what's going on. And what I'm doing is I'm watching that little crosshair that you can see that's moving around on the screen. Okay, so there's my basic blocking in. Um, it doesn't look so great, um, but the area is all fixed and repaired. Now what I can do is I can press down option and sample and maybe I can lower my opacity of my brush. Um, I'll maybe make my brush size a little bit bigger. Um, and I'll just go in and I'll tap option and I'll just go in and I'll just do uh, what I call uh, dusting here. It's just a very light dusting to get rid of some of those seams and transitions. So I'm painting with a very a lower opacity brush. Um, and it's just like um, in cooking, whoops. You have to be careful that you don't sample the house or his head um, so that way it doesn't, um, you don't want your brush too big. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. Definitely looks better than before. And just look for transitions or weird lines and just make sure that, there we go. So something like that. And I think to finish up, I will go ahead and I will do a very light blur on the edge of the house. So I'll go to the house layer, just do a light blur on the edge of the house, that way it's a little softer, a little more incorporated, something like that. Okay, there we go. So that's the finished piece. It looks kind of goofy. It looks, I thought it was going to be cooler when, when I was thinking about it, but it's not bad. It at least teaches you its technique. Okay, so this was a little bit of a longer video, but it showed you a couple different things, plus some extra uh, goodies. Uh, some things that I did not plan on, but um, it is what it is. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you.